So you might be wondering what we're doing here. Uh, we are doing the Mine Hill Gravel Challenge and it is a 13 mile course and you have an option of doing two laps or three and we're doing the three lap option which means that it'll be around 40 miles with approximately 4,000 feet of elevation gain. So this is one week after Farmer's Daughter just so you all know I am feeling better my back is fine uh, so we're gonna head back to the start line and just wait for us to get started. Hey guys, so this is a recap of the Mine Hill Gravel Challenge that Joy and I did on uh, May 28th, Sunday, May 28th. Uh, so just want to start by uh, giving you some information about the event itself. The event actually started as a half marathon run and it's been going on that way for several years. And just this year in 2023, they added a gravel bike race to it. So the course was designed as a half marathon distance. So it's a 13.1, approximately 13.1 mile loop. Both the running race and the, uh, the gravel bike race were held on the same day. Um, not at the exact same time, but there was some overlap. So for the gravel bike race, riders had the option to do either a 26 mile or a 39 mile um, distance, which, so we did the 39 mile. So we did the same course, the 13.1 mile loop, we did it three times. The riders started first, I think it was roughly uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and then the runners started roughly a half hour after the riders. Um, so I was actually a little nervous about having the riders and runners on the course at the same time, because I thought it could be potentially dangerous. You know, if, um, you know, we, we came up upon runners and you know, had to, had to try to, to go around runners at, you know, relatively high speed. You know, I thought it, it might get a little bit um, dicey, but it actually ended up working out just fine. Uh, the event was not chip timed, but they, the event staff was recording the finishing times of each rider as, as they came across the finishing line, which um, the, both the start, the start and finish line starts at uh, the Mine Hill Distillery in Roxbury, Connecticut. So my strategy for the race was I, I wanted to get into, get close to the front or part of like one of the front groups in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the race and hoping to latch onto some wheels to get a little bit of free speed on the flats before we hit the first climb, um, knowing that ultimately I was going to likely get dropped on the on the climb uh, by the stronger riders. Um, so uh, I, I kind of assumed that I was going to end up being solo most of the day after we were done with the first climb, but I was hoping to at least ride in a group up until that point so that I, I could get a little bit of free speed. Um, fortunately, it didn't really work out that way for me. Uh, I found myself you know, riding above threshold in the beginning just to uh maybe i didn't go maybe i didn't go hard enough right at the start and then i kind of got off the back a little bit and then i was trying to do above threshold to get back onto the group and i never got back on so i was i was almost riding solo the whole time um you know i had you know a few people riding around me up until i, I got to the first climb but no significant group so that part of my strategy kind of went out the window. Good 
Jason, right? Yeah. How's it going? We just started watching your videos. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. Oh guys, already got dropped from the front group. Heading up the first climb now. So a little bit about the course. About 10 out of the 13 miles was mostly flat to rolling sort of terrain, you know, small um, hills that were uh, or bumps that were not steep. Um, so it was a pretty steady riding most of the time. And then there was a, about a three mile stretch where most of the elevation gain took place. And I would say that the, the elevation gain for each lap was somewhere over a, a thousand feet. And most of that again came on, on this three mile stretch. The, this three mile stretch of climbing, it consisted of three climbs. Uh, the first one was Shiner Mountain Road, which was almost a mile on dirt with seven, 7.4% 7 average grade and max grade over 15%. I settled down on the first climb. You know, I, from that point, I said, okay, the first part of the race didn't go how I wanted it to, but I was kind of planning or assuming that I was going to be riding solo most of it anyway, so here we are on the first climb, and it's just time to settle into my pacing strategy. But when I got to the top of the the first set of climbs and went down the, the West Churchill descent, you know, then my legs kind of came back to life. I was able to start doing tempo again. Well, guys, I think I'm going to be solo for most of this ride. So this will be a good practice and pacing. Let's see if I can get it right. I think I went a little too hard in the beginning. Gonna try to keep it to a low tempo on these flatter parts. I have to grind up most of it. So I wanna shift some of the workload. from my legs to my heart and lungs. Legs were feeling pretty good. I was able to, to spin at a you know pretty good cadence, um, riding in the tempo at in the tempo power zone. Uh, and I felt like riding at that high cadence on the flats was important for me because it kind of loosened up my legs and kept my legs feeling good and loose uh, up until I, I got to the next series of climbs, which were inevitably going to be a grind. Well, as you can see, there's runners on the course now and I have to be careful going around them. I'm also getting laughed by riders, stronger riders. But that's okay. Yeah. 
Thanks. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. So my strategy was a lofty one. I knew this was going to be a, a, a tall order for me because, you know, riding at, at tempo and then going straight, going into the threshold and then back to tempo with minimal recovery. There was really the only, Thank you. the only re recovery that you had on the, on the, the course if you're racing it hard is the, uh, this less than a mile descent coming down uh, West Churchill. So after that recovery, I, I knew I would have you know, roughly 30 minute stretch between there and the, the time when I get back to the, the climbs again. Uh, so I, that means I have to do 30 minutes of tempo then straight into some upper threshold you know, then I would get another short recovery, and then it's another 30 minutes of tempo. Uh, so I knew this was going to be difficult, but, um, you know, I just, I gave it everything I had and just wanted to, wanted to see if I could pull this off. But sure enough, my legs did feel increasingly fatigued uh, each time I hit the climbs. And, uh, you know, the first time I felt, okay, you know, this is, this is hard, but not too bad. Second time, um, okay, my power is noticeably dropping. Uh, and then third time, you know, was just really a struggle. Um, and my power did drop by about 15 watts on the climbs. Um, if I compare the, the last two series of climbs to the first one, my, my average power was about 15 watts lower. I also want to mention my, my fueling strategy was to take in only liquid calories because I wanted to have a, a steady flow of carbs that were easily digestible and I wanted to be able to get as many carbs in as I could stomach and I knew I wasn't going to be able to you know chew on solid food while I was you know pretty much riding at tempo or higher the whole time. So I drank three bottles of water and electrolyte mix and had two, two small squeeze bottles of maple syrup, which was probably around 1,000 calories worth of maple syrup. So that's um, about 90 grams of carbs per hour, which is on the upper end of, of anything that I've consumed before on a ride. But it, it ended up working out. I had no stomach issues. Uh, I, I did try to space out my consumption of the maple syrup, not, not take big amounts at once, but I would just kind of, you know, have one shot of it before, shortly before hitting the climb. And then um, after descending the climb, another shot, and then you know, kind of do the same thing on the next lap. So I was spacing it out um, pretty well, and maybe that's why it worked out. ended up pulling off my my strategy and uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results so as far as my results um, I ended up placing 29th out of 44 riders overall in the 39 mile race which 
on paper is not impressive at all. But I'm still very happy with how I performed. Um, this was honestly the, I, I think it was the best performance I've ever had on the bike. My time was two hours and 43 minutes. Average power, 212 watts, 230 watts normalized, and average speed, 14 and a half miles per hour. So just to put that in, into perspective, those power numbers are right in the right in zone three for me. Uh, and my average speed was higher than any gravel ride that I've ever done. And that was also the highest average power that I think I've ever done for a ride of more than two hours. Uh, so yeah, I was really pushing myself to the limit and, um, you know, I, I don't think I could have really done any better than I did. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with, with how things went that day. While I would have liked to finish in the top half of the field, I can't really control the strength of, of the other riders. And I think in this case, even though it was a small field, there were plenty of strong riders and that was pretty apparent when I, you know, right, right off the gun, I got dropped. So, you know, I, I could tell right away that there were, um, there were many riders who were stronger than me and, um, you know, who knows when you compare yourself to other riders who you're not familiar with, you know, who knows, you know, their, their experience level. So having said that, I, I still would like to place higher in, in events in the future, obviously. I mean, it's always a goal to, when you do a race to, to try to place as highly as you can. So you know, hopefully I can build on this experience and it does. This experience did give me a lot of confidence in my potential and hopefully I can carry that forward and gain more, uh, not just more fitness, but gain more uh, racing skill and experience. So for my race, I guess I'll try to keep it short. So this is a week after Farmer's Daughter, and as you guys know, um, I crashed out on Farmer's Daughter and I did up, so I never really got to finish the race. And uh, because I crashed and I hurt my back, I really wasn't trying to, um, I wasn't doing any kind of riding at all that week. I didn't even do any strength training because I wanted to make sure that, that my back was going to be 100% for my hill. I did like a really easy ride the day before. Uh, Jason and I both did an easy ride along Candlewood Lake Road, which is kind of like our normal route where we, we're doing an easy ride. We just take this out and back loop. And um, I actually swapped out my my pedals to the Asioma pedals, which are road pedals, because I wanted to use the road shoes because they were lighter and they're a lot more, a little more stiffer than the gravel shoes. Um, so I went with that. Everything else was pretty much the same setup. Uh, I have the hydration bladder in the Rock Bros frame bag, and I had the uh, I had my top tube bag, which was filled with mainly just gels. I typically in my rides I would bring uh, gummies with me, like gummy bears, or like I got these from Costco, which are like gummy Legos. And I didn't take them with me this time because they were too heavy. So I wound up just taking four gels with me. And in hindsight, I think I should have brought the gummies because I feel like I get a better performance out of that than the, um, than just gels. So the start of the ride, it was actually pretty cold that morning. It was cooler than, than, um, than the previous week starting off and we had to go to registration at seven o'clock. So it's kind of early and you know, normally we're like at registration at eight o'clock and we start the ride at nine, but um, this was kind of an early start. Uh, we started at eight o'clock and the runner started at 8.30. So it was a cool morning. I didn't really do any warm ups. I saw a couple of guys kind of doing warm up on this gravel hill. Um, in hindsight, I think maybe I should have done that. I should have done a, a little bit of a warm up but I was also kind of like excited. 
Um, we got to meet a couple of people that watched our videos, which is awesome. And uh, so, yeah, we got to the, the, the start line and the race promoter, race director was explaining to us about how this um, loop was going to go and how we were going to loop around the Mine Hill Distillery as a lap and then go back out again. And so the little stretch, I'm going to say about like a quarter of a mile, half a mile long is on, on a uh, main road on Route 67. And so it does get, we've ridden on this road many times before and it does kind of get, it does, it's not super busy, but it is a well-trafficked road. Um, so they close the one lane um, just for car traffic and the other lane is just for bikers and runners. The left side of the lane going out is for bikers and runners and the right side of the lane was for cars going in either direction and there were cops on either side of it kind of directing traffic. But when we started, there were, we noticed that there were cars coming toward our direction. And so we had to kind of veer over to the right side of the lane, which is supposed to be for cars. And thankfully there were no cars coming uh, on the other direction. And so that was kind of a little hairy start. And we found out that um, there weren't, there wasn't really a cop at the other side to direct the traffic. So uh, the motorists didn't really know that, you know, we were actually, we were doing a, a race there. I thought there were cops up there to guide them. Um, so anyway, we got past that main road and hopped onto a road called Sentry Hill, which was still paved, which eventually connects to the gravel road. And uh, I was still trying to hang on to the front group and they were just way too fast for me. So I couldn't keep up with them. And eventually I dropped back a little bit just to kind of save my energy. And I uh, hopped on to the wheels of these uh, mountain bikers. So I hopped on their wheel and kind of stayed with them, kind of stayed in the back, you know, drafting behind them, trying to save as much energy as I could.
and then we hit the first climb, the Shiner Mountain. And uh, I felt like I was going, you know, I did feel like I was going pretty hard on it. Um, and then I realized I looked down at the Wahoo and, and I noticed that my power was spiking way too high up to like 300 watts, which I didn't want to do. And so I scaled back a little bit, but I also wanted to make sure that I was, you know, keeping pace. But in hindsight, also, I don't think that was a good idea. Um, eventually, the mountain bikers did overtake me on the climbs, and I kind of just stayed back. And then I hopped on to the wheel of this other guy that came up, came up from behind. All right, well, Jason caught up with me. And I think I burned matches there. Never learned my lesson. Yeah, <sighs> oh. yeah. Now that was kind of like the game for the first two laps was me hopping on the wheel of somebody else, with some other rider in front of me. Oh, yeah. I know it's, yeah, it's really steep. Luckily, the steep part is paved. And then we, I came back uh, for the, the second lap. I still felt pretty good. It was hard, um, but then you know I went to, through the through the distillery and went back out again and again, stuck behind the wheel of a guy. Thirty-three. Shiner Mountain, um, he kind of drilled it and I lost him. And uh, from then on, I was just kind of solo. And uh, I was kind of yo-yoing back and forth behind this guy. Um, and we hit the, so there were, there were, there were actually three climbs. I believe this was in the second lap where I, as I was riding up Shiner Mountain, I saw a woman, um, one of the uh, trail runners, I saw her walking up this. And I was going so slow. I started talking to her and I said to her, it's probably easier just to walk this. But she was walking it and we were pretty much like on pace with one another. And eventually I did um, ride away uh, from her, but um, you know, it was kind of funny that I was trying to save my legs uh, for the third lap. And then there, that also happened on the third climb and it's another steep one, which is West Churchill Road. The, the first part is steep, but it's all it's paved, so it was a little manageable. To, to walk it. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> it's faster to walk this. <laughs> oh. Thanks, you too. No, there's no way I could do it on foot. <laughs> this is the last hill. Downhill yes, downhill and flat, okay. and you go back. Okay. Like little hills, yeah, but not this big. Attention. Yeah. Oh no. 
and the gravel, because it hadn't rained for so long, it was pretty loose. And so I couldn't really get out of the saddle because my, every time I did, my tires would slip out. So it was easier for me to, to just stay seated and, and pedal. Came down to the scent and unfortunately my camera stopped. Uh, it ran out of battery and I didn't realize how quickly it was gonna run out of battery. And I, I should have known because it did get warm and I guess the camera tends to overheat. And so the battery life uh, is shortened when it's warmer out. So I, I didn't get the third lap, but I was starting to fade. I was actually starting to, to, I tried to eat as much as I could. I tried to take in as much of the gels as I could. And I had no problems with that. I had no problems with hydrating, but I did start to fade on the third lap. After I went around the distillery for the third lap, I knew I was like, oh my God, I, I felt like my energy was starting to, to fade. And, and I felt a little off on my legs, but I didn't, I didn't really like think too much of it. And then I approached the Shiner Mountain again. I was pushing hard, but I wasn't doing anything more than zone two on it. And it was a grind to do zone two. And I was, I was, I was struggling. And it was then that the second, the, the third place woman caught up to me. She asked me if I was in first place. And I said to her, no, there's another woman that's way ahead of us. And so we got to talking and I thought maybe I'd hop on her wheel, but I just didn't have anything left after that. And she rode off from me and I was hoping like maybe my legs would come back. Um, and then she rode off and then on a second climb, it's not a steep, but I got off on a second climb just to kind of give my, my, my butt a break. And as soon as I got off and pedaled for a little bit, I started to feel my quads locking up. And that's when I knew I was starting to cramp on both legs, both quads. And so I sat back down and I'm just like praying that it doesn't continue to, uh, to bother me. And I, it, it stopped for a little bit. And I was like, I was trying to, to uh, massage it a little bit just to, to make it stop. Um, and it stopped and I drank more of my hydration mix. Um, and I, I kind of took it easy, just kind of, uh, made sure that I was still pedaling forward and not stopping. And so I approached the third climb and I could see the woman up ahead of me. My plan was to kind of go hard on the last, on the last climb. And I'm trying to pedal as hard as I could. And at one point I did get off the saddle and it's still a paved climb. And so it was fine until I hit the gravel section when I tried to get off the, the saddle from that. And again, my legs locked up on me. And at that point I just said, you know what? I, it's just better that I don't injure myself. So I think I'm just going to do as much as I could without cramping. And so I sat back down and I did as much as I could so that my legs didn't cramp. I descended and I felt like I descended as well as I could. So after the descent, um, it's, it's five miles and the, about the, the first two miles of it is pretty, is relatively flat. It's like rolling. And then if there are some climbing, getting back to the main road. And so that, that, that section where it was relatively flat, I thought I could drill it and do tempo and go as arrow as I can to catch her, but my legs just did not have it. And I was so disappointed in myself at how I performed on that day and how I almost had second place and just lost it on the third lap. So I kind of, you know, rolled into the finish line with my tail between my legs. I think this is Joy coming in. Great job, honey. Hey. Great job, honey. Oh, I, I had really bad 
Uh. I cramped up. Oh, I cramped. Damn. Well, yeah, I was blowing up on the third climb. Yeah. Oh, God, I, I started cramping up on the uh, that second climb when I tried to get out of the saddle. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, and I just couldn't push it anymore. Yeah. Damn. That's okay. Okay, I'll get out of here. My camera ran out of battery. Uh, so. Well, yeah, you're going to be mad at me because... You know, it was a fun experience, though. Um, and it's a learning experience. If this is somebody who has not raced, who's probably only raced a total of four times or five times in, what, the four years of riding a bike. And so there's still a lot of lessons to be learned from that experience. And I still had a lot of fun. And I was... I, I was proud of myself to, for keep for, um, keep on pedaling, uh, even though I had, um, some really bad thoughts when I had these, uh, these cramps. Um, but I was proud of myself that I just kept pedaling and I knew eventually I would finish. I just didn't know when exactly that would be, but yeah, so lesson learned from that and I'm still working on my pacing. I definitely think that there's still a lot more to be done with my fitness. It is still uh, something that's holding me back. Um, but I am, I'm trying to be as patient as I can with my fitness. I haven't really been to an event where the photographers did a, such a great job with um, just with the pictures. And because there weren't that many people doing this event, I think there were like 50 some odd people in total doing both the 39 and the 26 miler um, because there weren't that many people riding photographers were able to, to get capture photos of, of us multiple times. And it helps that we did laps of it so they could take multiple photos of us. There was a photographer at the finish line and they were able to snap. He was able to snap a picture of me finishing. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. And thank you again for those of you who, uh, watch our channels and say hi to us at these events. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy your rides. Bye-bye.